Good afternoon, everybody. It's that time where you check your top stories making headlines in Israel. With me, Rolene Marks, right here on the Israel Brief, brought to you by Lay of the Land. Now, over the past couple of months, we have covered uh, quite extensively the killing of Al Jazeera journalist Shirin Abu Akleh. Earlier today, Al Jazeera, the Qatar-based news agency that employed Abu Akleh announced that they have filed a lawsuit at the International Criminal Court at The Hague saying that they have conducted their own investigation and uh, have uncovered some new evidence. Now, let's go back to the incident as it occurred. This was round about May this year during counter-terror operations in Jenin. Israeli counter-terror forces exchanged heavy fire with Palestinian gunmen in Jenin and war correspondent Abu Akleh was tragically killed in the exchange. Now, Every journalist, myself included, but especially war correspondents, understand the risk that they take going into a conflict zone. After the incident occurred, the Palestinian coroner said that he could not determine who was responsible. A independent U.S. forensic team said that the bullet was too badly damaged to conclusively determine who was responsible. And the Israeli army conducted their own operational investigation and said while it is inconclusive who is responsible, there is a probability that it could be the IDF. Now, that is not an admission of guilt. It is just saying that it, there's a probability. There's also a probability it couldn't have been the IDF. Now, is this a coincidence? Maybe I'm a cynic. I just believe that with this uh, leveled up effort by the Palestinians and their supporters, which includes Al Jazeera, to engage in lawfare against the Jewish state and to take their grievances to the International Criminal Court, especially on an issue like this that has been highly politicized from the start, that we are perhaps seeing something a little bit more sinister. Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid commented on this saying that Israel will not allow its soldiers to be investigated and nobody should be preaching to us about moral fighting, especially not Al Jazeera. Now, we have been following also quite closely efforts to build a coalition and outgoing Justice Minister Gidon Sa'ar today has said that, or he has appealed to President Herzog not to extend Netanyahu's mandate uh, beyond the deadline, which is now the 11th of December, uh, to build his coalition. Sa'ar says that in his opinion, he believes a government has already been formed, but uh, they are waiting for the deadline to expire, the extension to come in so that uh, problematic legislation, that he called it, can be passed. Now, this would include legislation like uh, deciding on who a new Knesset speaker is before the allocated time and also um, pushing forward a basic law which would allow Arya Derry to become finance minister despite the fact that he has a, a conviction on tax fraud. So watch this space. Samuel Hayek, a well-known figure in uh, UK jury and also uh, in Israeli politics, has appealed to the Jewish National Fund, or Karen Kayemet Le Israel, as it is called here in Israel, to really recalibrate its focus and donate at least a billion dollars of its considerable budget to bolstering diaspora jury. In his opinion, he believes that the organization needs to do this in order to stay relevant. And he also says it's great that Israel has a diaspora ministry, but more focus needs to happen now on to, to strengthen diaspora Jewish communities. He believes that Israel is not doing enough to do this. The JNF is 121 years old. Many of you will be familiar with the Pushka or the blue box where people put money in to build the state of Israel. And he believes that now the time has come for Israel to build these communities.
And just when you think he couldn't be more riddled with hate, the artist, formerly relevant and known as Kanye West, now known as Ye, has conducted his latest interview, this time with the alt-right group known as the Proud Boys. It wasn't enough last week that he spoke to Alex Jones of InfoWars. Stay tuned for an article that I have about that going up on our website in the next couple of days and said that he loves Hitler and he believes that we should stop, in his words, dissing Nazis and he loves Nazis. He has now called on Jews to forgive Hitler. He says, let it go. Let it go. Because, of course, we can't just let go the genocide of our families and over six million of our people. He believes that uh, it is the Jews who have uh, caused the world to hate Hitler and that we are just angry because he kicked us out of his country. Um, yay or nay or whatever you want to call yourself uh, these days. Um, it wasn't the fact that we were kicked out of Germany. I love how we should have been kicked out of Germany. No, it might have had something to do with the Nuremberg laws and the wholesale slaughter of over six million of us, regardless of age, gender, uh, belief or anything, just simply because we were Jewish. I mean, Jesus. And uh, he went on to say that the Holocaust is not the only Holocaust, that there is a Holocaust now called abortions, and it is about the system of eugenics. Somebody please educate the artist formerly known as Popular uh, exactly what eugenics is all about. Maybe if he understood eugenics, he would understood why Hitler started uh, uh, his policy of the elimination of the Jewish people because he believed in eugenics and used that to justify his ravenous hatred. Anywho, how this is going to end, uh, it is beyond me, but one thing is for certain, we cannot let Kanye West go unanswered. So those are the top stories making headlines. Don't forget to check out our website at www.lovetheland.online. There is a fantastic article by Dave Kaplan all about the 80th anniversary of the Battle of El Alamein. It is up on our Facebook page. While you're there, please give us a like, a follow, and don't forget to share our content. Our YouTube channel is at the Israel Brief. You guys know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe by clicking on that red button. And we're on Twitter at Lay of the Land 5. I'm Rolene Marks. This is the Israel Brief. Join me again tomorrow as I bring you your top stories.